Hello guys, do you know that time is very valuable? Do you appreciate your time? If you have free time, what do you usually do? Surely, you will spend your time with any kind of activity that you prefer or most likely will do. However, it is difficult to manage our valuable time, especially with work or daily responsibilities. When this happens, you will surely tend to escape from those responsibilities by putting away all the things that stresses you. The valuable time that you have should encourage you to engage with any activity that will improve your sense of well-being, happiness and life satisfactions. This concept is closely related to how you gain benefit from how you spend your leisure time. Leisure time usually involves an individual leaving aside routine activities like work and instead spend time more on enjoyable activities. During free time, there are many activities that we can practice or do as hobbies. For example, gardening, cycling, sightseeing, reading, shopping, and listening to music. On average day, nearly everyone aged 15 and over 90% engage in some sort of leisure activity such as socializing, exercising, or watching TV. Watching TV was the leisure activity that occupied most of our time accounting for more than half of all leisure time, on average. Men spend 3 hours per day for this activity, while women spend 2.6 hours. Socializing, such as visiting friends or attending social events, was the next most common leisure activity, accounting for 7 hours per day for both men and women. Sometimes, people will engage in leisure activities because of their human nature, which love to seek fun, relax, and rejoice from their responsibilities, which sometimes cause fatigue. Engaging in leisure activity can benefit a lot to our life. Many researchers agreed and found that actively participating in leisure activity has a negative association with stress and depressive symptoms. For an example, a study indicates that participation in leisure activity improves health status, provides the opportunity to meet new people and reduce depressions. Leisure activity can influence health. It can be used as a diversion medium to divert the psychological distress into an enjoyment phase. There are extensive literature on the benefits of leisure, which is help people to recover from fatigue, reduce stress, learn skills and self-determination, improve health, enjoy the natural environment, tranquility and talking to other people. In this documentary, we will exploring more about leisure activities which are practiced by people in their free time. As leisure activity can be done anywhere, we went to visit one of the attractive places in Kuala Lumpur, which is the Perdana Botanical Garden. Perdana Botanical Garden, formerly known as Taman Tasik Perdana or Lake Garden, is located in the Heritage Park of Kuala Lumpur. It is Kuala Lumpur's first large-scale recreational park with measurement 91.6 hectares and was established in 1888. Lake Gardens serve as place of refuge from the hustle and bustle of the city during colonial time. In 1975, it was renamed as Taman Tasik Perdana or the Perdana Lake Garden by Tun Abdul Razak. 
On 28 June 2011, the garden was again changed its name to Perdana Botanical Garden by Dato Sri Najib Razak in the first phase of turning the park into a botanical garden. This garden consists of many Malaysia's most popular tourist attractions including Cat Albert Park as the world's largest walk in aviary, a butterfly park, a deer park, orchid and hibiscus garden. Perdana Botanical Garden is a suitable place for any leisure activities such as jogging, cycling, walking, taking pictures, doing wellness activities, and experiencing nature's ambience. To get more information about the perception in Perdana Botanical Garden as a leisure attraction, we had interviewed several visitors who spent their time here. We also did ask them on what has motivated them to come here, how frequent they visit this place, and what are the activities they will engage. Wow, it's quite peaceful. The greenery is not like Hong Kong, it's all buildings. And here, there's the park. There's a big park, the lake. There's a, a bird's park, and uh, there's deer park. Hibiscus, uh, oh, yeah. plants, we love it. This is it's quite amazing that this is a commercial city center, and then you have a, such a few green, greenery park. This is this is impressive. Instead of walking in and experiencing the natural environment, some of the visitors would like to snap some pictures and make use of this park as a location for photographers. Throughout our walk, we saw a lot of visitors taking pictures with their family and there are also some groups from organizations having their photoshoot session. As this place is rich with natural environments and beautiful sceneries, people who come here will not miss this opportunity to snap pictures to have them as their memories. Uh, bagi saya, uh, kalau macam panas macam tu, mungkin kena tambah sikit uh, bumbung lah supaya boleh bertelur sikit macam tu je lah. Perdana Botanical Garden is very suitable for leisure and recreational purpose. Thus, it is encouraged for visitors to bring their family here and use some activities like playing rollerblades, having picnics and other family bonding activities. Along the walking path, we saw many playgrounds provided by this park and most of the parents will come here will spend their time with their children. Apart from the botanical garden, visitors can also engage with many activities available at the bird park like feeding birds, taking photos with the birds at Federer Friends photo booths, soaking feet at the fish spa, and so on. The attractions in the bird park include the Love Aviary, World of Parrots, Educational Stations, Bird Show, Hornbeam Park, Peacock and Hornbeam Gift Shops, Bubble Land, and Flamingo Land. To enter this park, we need to pay a fee of 27 ringgit for adults and 13 ringgit for children. However, for foreign tourists, the price may be a little bit expensive, which are 67 ringgit for adults and 45 ringgit for children. Can you buy it? Why? 
chữa thủy an ở chữ nữa của con dấu K. Albert Park is well known as the world's largest refined aviary. It was established in 1991 and was a part of a lake garden. Here, the most popular activity for leisure purpose is the bird show. Visitors can watch tame birds listening to their guardian's instructions. They will do what have been instructed by their guardian and the best part is the visitor can participate in the showcase. According to him, the peak hours for this park is from 11.30 am until 2 pm because it is the time to feed the birds. He also said the peak hours are usually on Saturdays and Sundays depending on the condition of the weather. If the weather is not okay and it's raining, the park will be closed because the birds will not listen to the instructions of their guides. He also mentions that visitors will prefer more on bird show which will always held at the amphitheater on 12.30pm and 3.30pm. Besides feeding birds and watching bird shows, visitors can do some activities in the orchid gardens. This place was officiated by Datin Sri Dr. Siti Hasma binti Haji Mama Ali on 15 April 1986. Usually, visitors will snap pictures of orchids, sightseeing and enjoying some relaxing activities. However, the activities may be mundane due to bleak and dull ambience. This was proven when we interviewed the visitors. Some of them expressed their dissatisfactions on the maintenance of the garden. <laughs> I think if it's too hot, isn't it? Over there, you just you, you make an orchid garden, open air, uh, at a small, small hill. I think it's too hot for the orchid. In conclusion, the Perdana Botanical Garden is the best place for visitors who love to spend their time here. The beautiful ambience and the largest park in Kuala Lumpur has attracted many visitors to visit this place. Although this park was located in the middle of the hustle and bustle of the city, it is still keeps the freshness and beautiful greenery. Besides, the park provides all kind of attraction for the visitors and they can do many activities here. To improve the operations of this park, we gain some suggestions from the visitors that we had interviewed. Mostly, they suggested that the park should provide more entertainment and programs here so that they can join instead of just strolling in here. They had also said that the management must improve more on their directory so that first-timer visitors can reach to their destinations much more easily. Besides that, the management should focus more on maintaining the freshness of the flora, especially on the orchids and hibiscus park. In general, most of the visitors we interviewed were satisfied and happy with the facilities and the activity provided here. Overall, the place is nice and beautiful. We really suggest for you guys to come here.